Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. Across the street and around the world, Cheyenne Hills. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the podcast, and welcome, Nathan. Glad you're here. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, are you, so are you ready for winter? I mean, I don't know. See, sometimes around here, you get this uh, little bit of a fall, and then winter hits, kind of warns yeah, you. Exactly. And then, and then it turns fall again for a hunk of time, maybe even summer. And I always then, think I'm... Yeah, man, you better you it better button it. down the hatch. So <laughs> if you don't have everything blown out or whatever, you yeah. know, we get one warning and, and we haven't quite got that warning yet. So, well, when it's 90 degrees, I always think I'm ready for winter. <laughs> yeah, and for then sure. I get a day like today and I'm yeah. thinking, I'm not quite yeah, ready I for those. I'm ready. I know I'm the same way. And it's like it's only yeah. it's only the 50. So we definitely are not ready yet. So right. Not mentally prepared. Yeah. Well, r- radicals. I mean, there's radicals. A, some radical stuff in our world. I've, yeah. I have this last week. I, I preached uh, a sermon on just some you know, some radicalism that's, that's going on and why, you know, some things that we, I don't think we're paying attention to in our world right? because we're so worried about masks and we're so worried about uh, uh, whether we should have the virus, uh, take the, take the vaccine or not. Right. 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 And those are big issues. I mean, right. I'm getting a lot, a lot of asks about, uh, when this is one of the things I'd like to talk about, mm-hmm. a lot of asks about <clears throat> um, religious exemption. Yes. So I've been reading into it and finding out, and I, I think I found a way through, but I, you know, I want the board to, to sign off on it and everything. But it's yeah. like, I really feel for that person out there that is, their job's on the line. Right. And they're, they're yeah. having, uh, uh, it's just kind of a, kind of a frightening thing. Do you know any, anything new in that whole well, world? I'll say this. I didn't until about two weeks ago, about 30% of my calls right now are on that subject. Yep. And there was a new development that has driven the current um, conversation, I think, and that is that the local hospital has, in the past, people could write out uh, for write in for a religious exemption. Yeah. The new form then says, well, you need to now have some sort of religious authority, mm. um, sign off on that, and then they have to give a reason why. Now, there's a, a real problem. I'm not a lawyer, so I need to say that. Yeah. But I'm not a lawyer. But if a person's religious liberty depends upon another religious leader kind of telling them that they have a That's religious... A good point. There, there's a real problem. And I, yeah. I really think that that would fir- run into a First Amendment challenge. And I'm yeah. saying that purely as a, as a layman in the subject. But uh, these are new issues that are coming up. And I really do think that there's a lot of problems that uh, we're trying to fight through now. And it's kind of new in the American conversation. Well, so I've gotten, I'm getting th- different things from pastors. You know, some pastors say, you know, we don't, since we don't have a, a uh, history of supporting uh, non-vaccine, like there are some mm-hmm. denominations, apparently uh, some more religious affiliations that um, they, they uh, deny vaccines. That's part of their statements. Mm-hmm. We don't, we don't have anything like that in our statements. So right. we have to come at it a different, different way. So the first I was just kind of had the opinion. It's like, well, okay, we can't do that. Well, then there's some more things that have come down from, I think, reputable um, sources. And they're saying, here's what, it, here's what churches can do. They can basically support the individuals a right mm-hmm. to, to whatever they believe. Mm-hmm. But this just giving it a little bit of more horsepower uh, mm-hmm. for that letter of, of uh, you know, and, but they also recommend this, like, this has got to be, a, a real conviction for that person and not just an right. excuse, you know, or just to write right. this off. And because a lot of, a lot of these issues are really medical issues mm-hmm. and they're trying to, trying to make it more. Right. And so there's, I thought that was a good balanced approach, but it's like, I do think there's some things that, that we can do to help, help those individuals. But yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to do the best we can as a church and, uh, and, uh, and to support people's, I mean, they, that Liberty, you know, every one, every one of our leaders, I mean, um, uh, Biden, Pelosi, all of them um, basically came out and said, well, this will never be mandated. I mean, I've heard That's those montages. Right. And right. Uh, and then now the change of tone, at, I don't know what, a month, two, two months later, mm-hmm. complete change, change of tone to the point of, you know, you're not going to, you've got to be vaccinated to get on a plane or you to go to a restaurant or to be work in this facility or right. whatever it is. Yeah. And and with that, of course, the inconsistency 
of, and I'm, I'm getting to radicals, just so you know, because mm-hmm. this is how you build radicals. Right, exactly. Seriously. Right. But the but circumstances the will circumstance drive that. The drives you to, to, to crazy. Right. You know, when you say drives me crazy, it's like, I understand that. Right. Because if you're an illegal immigrant, apparently not vaccinated, um, if you are in the uh, Congress or the Senate, you don't have to be vaccinated. If you are, was it, I think, post office, is that true? I'm not sure if that's right. I'm not right sure. Or not. Kind of on the federal, I, I it's that. a federal. Yeah. yeah, that you don't have to be vaccinated. So there's there's these, these exemptions, and yet there's these manda- mandates. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, this doesn't make any sense. This exactly. is making us crazy. And yeah. so anyway, this, this, it's, can you bring any kind of sanity to any of this? It would be, <laughs> be fantastic. Well, I, I would love to. I'd love to say I could because <laughs> the challenges are so immense. And really you're are. right in that w- when you run into a situation like this where freedoms are treated, yeah. for instance, in Australia, a state in Australia made the statement, and here's how they phrased it, so-called freedoms will be lost unless you are vaccinated. Now, yeah. they attacked it directly. Now, I- I- interestingly, wow. they call freedoms so-called. So they kind of belittle hmm. the core understanding of freedom. If you have any understanding of freedom and how hard fought they have been through the Anglo-Saxon world, how yeah. we arrived where we are today, and, and then someone calls them so-called, oh yeah. my word. It's huge. Yeah. It's like you, we've talked about that on this right. program, that right. that freedom of conscience is the the. I don't know, the holy grail of freedom. Absolutely. Isn't that right? Because you can't have freedom without a free mind. Yeah. And so, and that's the that's the circumstance we find ourselves in. And yet, then you come down, you know, away from Australia, you look just at Cheyenne, Wyoming. There's a there's a core fundamental doctrine that we understand that comes out of the scripture. We call it the priesthood of every believer. Yep. And in that we stand equally before God's throne. And God speaks directly to us. So not through another individual. God speaks directly to us in our own consciences and in our own hearts. And right. and when a person then has to say, all right, I'm going to give up this understanding of what the Bible lays out for us, the priesthood of the believer, and I'm, I'm going to now go and get a bunch of other people to tell me that my understanding somehow is right. Well, the challenge is you begin to take that freedom of conscience and you set it aside and you start to move it into higher and higher structures until eventually we wind up back where we were prior to the 1600s in yeah. the Anglo-Saxon world, yeah. where what the king said was the divine right of kings, and therefore you must follow him. There is no priesthood of the believer. Right. This becomes a fundamental religious freedom issue. Right. And so it's really concerning. So do you think it's legitimate for someone to say, I just... I just conscientiously object to the vaccine because either A, I've had it, had the, I've had the virus, uh-huh. or B, I've, uh, uh, maybe there's some medical issue they're concerned about that mm-hmm. they'd like to have some more time to see it tested. Mm-hmm. Um, those, are, those are two of the main ones that I've seen. And to say that I conscientiously object, is that, is that a divine, is that, is that some of the priesthood of the believer type of language? Well, I I don't know if if that is or the secondary issue would be this. If they then have to turn over to another person to then put their imprint of approval on it, that I think is a problematic issue. Yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah. That's where we're at. Well, okay, so there's some things. Let's let's jump topics. (laughs) Sure. Um, The... uh, you were you were talking about when you came in here. There's some uh, kind of some radical things happening in our in our House of Representatives in the national level. And, right. Uh, yeah, kind of kind of unpack this for us a little yeah. bit. Well, just within the last uh, 48 hours, the most radical uh, pro-abortion bill in human history wow. passed the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, mind you. Not a single Republican voted for it. Okay. It was purely on partisan, partisan lines. And one very brave Democrat huh. uh, jumped lines and said, no, this is so radical, I can't vote for it. Wow. But otherwise, so it was purely partisan. It will not make it through the Senate. Can you unpack what's in it? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So basically what it would do away with is any state that has built up any sort of protections for life in the womb. It overrides all of that. Okay. So basically, it says that the federal government has the the authority to override those state uh, laws. Oh wow! And so it is extremely dangerous. Not only that, it moves it so far beyond Roe v. Wade. Here's one of the things about wow. Roe versus Wade: it actually turned that over to the states. Yep. And just basically said that the federal government. This is outside the purview of the federal government. 
And now they're actually trying to push beyond, way beyond Roe v. Wade. Here's the wild thing. Wow. Um, already, many states in the United States of America are so, so far beyond where Europe is on this. Hmm. Many people like to think of Europe as kind of this radical... Uh, liberal yeah. uh, kind of society. Yeah, partially socialistic, in their, especially in some of their right. medicine, some of the ways they handle things. Right. Yeah. When true. it comes to abortion, they look as a, at America as though we're crazy. Wow. Because for many of them, depending on 12, 14 weeks, it, it, it varies from place to place, but there's essentially no abortion beyond 12 to 14 weeks. So it's in only in the, the first... all the countries in Europe? Well, all but a couple. Is that right? But it's it's way different than the United States that. of America. Wow. So then you take that, and in the United States of America, there are certain states, certain jurisdictions, where their abortion law will allow you to kill a child in the womb all the way up until the day before they're born. Yeah. And they look at that, and they say, yeah. say that is barbaric. Sure. And they're right. And they're right, yeah. Right. And wow. so now they're trying to... It's, it's become so radical, and... They kind of admitted. I forget the individual who was talking about this. It was in a, I think a, um, uh, a news article, but they were talking about how they wanted to win over the urban, the urban woman, basically. Okay. But what I'm understanding in many polls is that even among urban ladies, there are elements there. This is not about uh, women's rights. They really are concerned that this is an opportunity to kill children and that concerns them because they love children. Yeah. And we all love children. And yeah. so they recognize that the the lifting up of us one potential so-called right at the killing, the snuffing out of another person's so-called right, wow. that is wrong. Yeah. And so and that's what the Christian wow. has been articulating. And this comes forever. The, I mean, yeah. how long have we been just saying this is, you know, in, and I've, I've said this a hundred times. I I don't expect the non-believer to have my my view, but it's like I do expect it. You can see that this is at the third trimester, right? Or even twenty-one weeks. Yeah, we can keep that baby alive outside of everybody recognizes that. It's just right. it's just the most maddening thing that, that people, whether you have faith or not, you ought to be able to see that. And there's things that drive. I guess that's the things things that drive things that we don't ever. Yeah. Have a full understanding. Do you think that some of this is driven by, you know, let's say Texas, they're getting some traction with that bill. Do you mm -hmm. think that is this the federal government trying to say, well, we're going to fix that? Well, as far think? as uh, um, who comes first, you know, who's on first, what's on second, yeah. I don't know who's on third, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I don't know who started what. I do know this that folks in Texas can see people that are radically calling for abortion all the way up until birth. And they're very concerned. And so and the other thing, too, is very clearly what they're pointing at is they're very concerned about life. Yeah. And I love that, by yeah. the way. Yeah. The Texas um, people, what, what their vote was and what the affirmation was from the court and everywhere else is we're concerned about protecting life. I would sure. always rather be on the side of life. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And yet on the other side, there are other people that clearly have moved way beyond what the conversation was back in the Roe v. Wade days, the yeah. early part of the conversation. They're calling for radical openings to abort everything you can get your hands on. It truly is, as many wow. have phrased it today, a culture of death. Wow. And that's where we came back to that whole discussion uh, of radicalism. This is heavy, heavy, I know. dark stuff. So yeah. do, where do you think this bill will go? So it passed the House uh, by a small margin. Oh, very small margin. And it was purely partisan lines. To get it through the Senate, you would have to have 60 votes. Okay. They only have, uh, uh, what is it, 50 votes yeah. total right. um, in the Senate. So it, it will end. It's purely uh, kind of trying to... Um, proclaim to the world, this is where we stand. But I will say, mm. the entire world ought to be very concerned yeah. about anybody that would stand there. That's, that's terrible. That's a, oh my gosh. But here's one of the things I wanted to point to, uh, Galen. Do you ever feel like this conversation has gone on for decades? No, yeah. Well, and, and there's so many conversations like this. We could, we, you know, we were talking a little bit about curriculum in their mm -hmm. schools. We're talking about, you know, abortion now. And it, there's so many issues. And it's just, it's so it's so dark. It's like, right. you know, this is not about life. It's not about, you know, we just read, um, we just had a Bible study with a group of guys and we went through Psalm 139. Mm, and I knew that. you before you were born, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. If 
by the way, we got hung up on fearfully. I wanted to come back to that. Yeah, okay. And then, um, and I, you know, all the days were laid out for you before one of them were, was even lived. And it's like, this is what God sees about life. And, and another thing he said is that, um, the, if, if the thoughts that I, that I have of you, um, or the God you have of us were numbered, they would be more than the sand of the sea. Yeah. Can you, I mean, I can't fathom that God would have two thoughts about yeah. me, let alone sand of the sea kind of number of thoughts. Yeah. But that's a, that's an amazing lavishness yeah. of God's love for life and for mankind, for, you know, for yeah. his creation. Right. Well, that's kind of where David winds up. So it's been a little while, but I love that passage. He says, such, such thoughts are too wonderful for me. Yeah. They're too high. I can't even attain to them. Yeah. Where can I go from your spirit? Where That's can right. I flee from your presence? And then he goes so poetical. This is beautiful. He says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me. Yeah. And so there's this, this thing. God is so far beyond our human comprehension. By the way, yeah. I was teaching on this recently. The first and second commandments encompass that. The first commandment points out there is nothing that can be elevated to the heights of God. But secondly, you should never do anything that would try to pull God down to the depths or the lowness of man. Oh, wow. So therefore, thou no shalt have no other gods before me. Before me, right. Don't make any graven images. Don't even come close to that. That's He's, really interesting. I never yeah. thought about it. It's, it's kind of the bookends. Nothing right. above God, but nothing even close to competing with it. I was reading that in an old That's book really by good. R. Kent Hughes. Wow. It's out of production now. And I ran into that, and I thought, oh, I love that. That yeah. is good stuff. Yeah, because I think most people well, guys, have no other gods before you. But we do have idols that sometimes compete with, that's with true. God, and we all need to to check those, right, right and make right. sure that that's, that's a really And that's why when we come to this <clears throat> radicalism, there's a point where people begin to contest as though God is not present yeah. in the circumstance. Yeah, I think that's true. And that's the reason why it was asking you, and, and I, I am interested in your thoughts on this, sometimes it feels like, as we're talking about truth and scripture, that we just have to repeat ourselves over and over and over Oh, again. yeah. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, because it leaks, I guess. I mean, true. why does good stuff leak out? I mean, the bad stuff sticks, and the, you know, all the good stuff leaks out. I, I really don't understand that. But, yeah. you know, it's like we learned in seminary, you know, you, you're really not teaching new concepts because the spirit of God has placed these thoughts in That's our right. hearts. Right. Yeah. Really what we do as pastors is just to remind you what you already know. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And that's, it's just a reminder all the time, you know, confess sin or that God is love or that God is good and, and all those things. Right. But sometimes because of circumstances, right. It's pretty easy to forget. Right. You know, we were just talking about this too, about counting your blessings and, you know, if you start counting your blessings, you go, man, you, you can get yourself into a pretty good place. That's good. That's you know, true. You can say, wow, I got this and this is good. And then this is good and this is good. But, you know, but when you jump into the, the cesspool of, of the world, right. Sometimes you get to thinking that, man, this thing is, everything is, is horrible. Cause right. there's a lot of horrible. We there just is. talked about a lot of the horrible, right. but, uh, to be able to count your blessings and, and realize, okay, God, you've brought us another day and you've got to give us another whatever that yeah. th that your thoughts are great of us and all that. Okay. So I got to ask you my question then. So yes, sir. The, we were talking about this. I couldn't come up with a really good answer. I came up with an answer, but God says we are fearfully mm -hmm. and wonderfully made. I get wonderful. Mm -hmm. Why, why is it fearfully? Have you ever pondered that one before? I'm putting, well, you, on the, I'm putting you on the spot here. Now. I know, put I know me that. on the spot, but, but I have wondered about this. So we're supposed to hold God in, in fear and so okay. on. Okay. I so, agree. And I think it's that same concept. So, and and also oh, in our DNA, we are mm -hmm. built to to fear. Right? Is that what you're saying? And what I can see that what yeah. fear in that context is is a kind of reverential awe. Yep. Okay. And so, if if we are fearfully and wonderfully made, if you step back from yourself for just a moment, for instance, I for the first time in my life had an EKG done mm. this last week. Okay. And everything, the ticker's working great. Nice, good. <laughs> but I'm lying there and I'm looking at a screen that something that I depend on very much, that's very important to me. Yeah. I'm seeing it clinically and objectively, but I very much care that that's perfect. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm looking at this little flap that opens and then it has a second stage that kind of kicks open this way. And then when it starts to close, another thing opens up and I'm thinking, that's inside of me. And that is beat. That Every started beat. beating. Uh, yeah. Basically, nine months before I was born. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, it's amazing. I, there is a kind of awe. If yeah. you step back and consider God's creation that's in you, yeah. and that's, the, that's where a person that is contemplating their own suicide or something, they don't realize yeah. that they are, there's a kind of awe with which they ought to feel when you contemplate what God did in yeah. there in the act of creating. Right. There's certain things you just can't, you just yeah. like you, you can't touch, you know, the, what happens inside of a cell, what, how, how does this DNA and all this stuff work? You yeah. know, and even our, our immune systems, which we've talked about, I, it just fascinates me, Yeah, you know, all that stuff. And, and to think that, I think you're right. I think we are fearfully, I mean, right. it's like uh, even to fear this wonderful creator that, you know, not to, not to cross him, not to put anything above him, not to create anything that's even in our minds close to him. Right. Yeah. I, I really like that. That's a that's well, new in, that's a new insight. The greatest illustration of that kind of fear, I'm going to have to borrow this from C.S. Lewis, but have you ever read his Chronicles of Narnia? Yeah. He describes Aslan the lion. He always says, he's not a tame lion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, and his point my is favorite this. scene. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. So he's got this idea of this could destroy you in yeah. every way possible. That's really good. But he loves you. And so there's this point when we talk about reverential fear of God. Yeah. Yes. He is the God that spoke literally his words formed into worlds, yeah. but he loves me. Yeah. And so that brings this reverential awe. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. That's awesome. We got to land right there. Yeah, I know. That's, That's that was great. awesome. Well, we got a little bit of dose of the crazy and yeah. a whole, a whole big dose of the good. And I, that's kind of how we have to live. I think Amen. we, you know, you can't live in the deep end of the cesspool. You gotta, you gotta kind of come up and, and say, you know, God, you are, you are good and you're holding this thing together and we're we're doing our best to try to try to remind people of your truth amen amen well in the meantime as you go about your days be strong and very courageous god bless you all